Here is the strongest annihilation verse in the entire Old Testament. I will raise up for them a prophet, and it shall come to pass that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. That is the strongest proof of annihilationism in the entire Old Testament. Have I lost my mind? What am I talking about? That verse says I will require it of him. How on earth does that mean annihilationism? Well, stick around to the end, you're going to find out. Alright, hi guys, I'm Denver Chady and this is Bible Issues, the channel that gives you biblical answers to difficult questions. So Deuteronomy 18 verse 18 says, I will raise up for them a prophet like from among their brethren, and I will put my words in his mouth, he will speak to them all that I command him, this talking about Jesus, obviously, and it shall come to pass that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. And I'm saying that that is eternal. Annihilation language? What? Have I lost my mind? Am I crazy? You may say, well, that verse at best is neutral. It says, I will require it of him. It's talking about some kind of punishment, but it doesn't say what the punishment is. So how could I say that is talking about annihilationism? All right. And the answer is, look at how Peter quoted that verse in Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3 verse 22. For Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Again, it's talking about Jesus. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Now, that's not what the Old Testament verse says. Right? Peter here is clearly paraphrasing the verse because the Old Testament verse simply said, I will require it of him. But Peter, in paraphrasing it, clearly uses annihilation language. He shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. We believe in the verbal inspiration of Scripture. We believe that Peter, an apostle, was given the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to, to write and to speak words which eventually became scripture. Peter was speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and saying these words. Now, the Old Testament verse said, I will require it of him, clearly speaking of some kind of punishment, but some ambiguous form of punishment. It could be anything. It could be death. It could be eternal torment and fire. It could be anything. The Old Testament verse is vague. It doesn't say what the punishment is. But Peter, in paraphrasing that verse, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, told us that that, me that meant they will be utterly destroyed from among the people. So what is happening here is basically the Holy Spirit, through Peter, is telling us how he interprets that Old Testament verse. The Holy Spirit is telling us that when he inspired Moses to say, I will require it of him, he really meant, I will destroy them from among the people. That is annihilation language. Tell me, if the Holy Spirit, who is God, in his infinite wisdom knew that sinners will be eternally consciously tormented in the fires of hell, why would he use that kind of language? Now, sometimes... When New Testament writers quote the Old Testament, there are some variations in the text. And uh, very often that variation is because they are not quoting from the Hebrew Old Testament, which is what we have, but they were quoting from a Greek translation of the Old Testament, which is called a Septuagint. And there are some slight variations between the Septuagint and the Hebrew Old Testament. So is it possible that that's what's going on here? Well, in the Septuagint, the Old Testament verse reads like this. It shall come to pass that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will take vengeance upon him. It is slightly different in the wording, but taking vengeance on him is still vague and ambiguous. But Peter is, so Peter here is not quoting from the Septuagint. He is giving his own interpretation of that passage 
by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Basically, the Holy Spirit is telling us how God interpreted that passage. And he used annihilation language. Another thing to take note of is that this is the only time in the book of Acts when the apostles actually spoke about hell or the final judgment of sinners. I have counted 19 sermons that were preached in the book of Acts and they never make a reference to the word hell and they never talk about the final judgment of sinners except once and that is in this Acts chapter 3 passage that we just said. So this is the only time in preaching a sermon they act, in the book of Acts they actually talked about hell and they used destruction language. He will be destroyed from among the people. To my eternal conscious torment friends watching this video, while you are nursing your wounds, I want you to answer me this question. Have you ever preached a sermon on hell? Have you ever heard your pastor or some other ECT guy preach a sermon on hell? And did he or she ever use this kind of language? Did they ever say sinners will be destroyed from among the people? If somebody came up to you and they ask you, what will happen to sinners who go to hell? Will you say to them, they will be utterly destroyed from among the people? I guarantee you, you will never use that language. Because you believe in eternal conscious torment and somebody who believes in eternal conscious torment will never use that kind of language. If Peter, the apostle, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, believed that sinners will be eternally consciously tormented in hell, why would he say they would be destroyed from among the people? The Greek word that is translated utterly destroyed from among the people is a long word that I can't even pronounce, it's on your screen, exolithr, whatever. Right? I can't even pronounce it. The only reason some people pronounce Greek words is that they're, because they're trying to show off. I have nothing to prove here. In the Strong's Concordance, very interestingly, here's how Strong defined that word. Destroy utterly, annihilate, exterminate, root out. Now, I should point out that I don't really need that word to, to mean annihilate. I only need that word to mean death, die, to be destroyed. That is good enough for me to establish the doctrine of annihilationism. It is made up of two Greek words to completely slay out of. Now, there are some people who get very nervous with the fact that Peter used this particular word. So here is how HELPS Word Studies defines it. They say it meant totally destroy, referring to a complete loss of inheritance or reward. Now, how does that make sense? How does completely destroy mean a total loss of reward? How? Tell me how does that make sense? In what planet does that make sense? Not only does it not make sense, it is doctrinally false because salvation is not a reward. Heaven is not a reward. It's a free gift. A sinner who goes to hell doesn't lose a reward because the heaven was never something that they had. The only people who will be losing a reward are Christians who go to heaven, but they don't get their full reward for whatever reason. And 1 Corinthians 3 talks about that. They, their works will be destroyed. Nevertheless, they will be saved, but they're going to lose some reward. Sinners do not lose a reward. So, there is no way completely destroyed out of could mean complete loss of reward that is lexicographers panicking over the over the fact that peter used a word that communicates annihilationism here is how the old testament uses that kind of language destroyed from among the people deuteronomy 4 3 which is talking about an event that happened in numbers 25 he said your eyes have seen what the Lord did at Baal Peor. For the Lord your God has destroyed from among you all the men who followed Baal of Peor. But you who held fast to the Lord your God are alive today, every one of you. Notice the contrast. Destroyed from among you versus alive today. Those who were destroyed from among you are no longer alive today. Destroyed from among you means dead. It means no longer alive today. 
So you cannot even say death is a separation from God or death is a lower quality of life. No, death means no longer alive today. The more I study the Bible, the more I realize that the only way you could believe in eternal conscious torment is if you read that idea into the text of scripture. We all have presuppositions that we learn from our culture and they have to bring all of those presuppositions into the text. When I first started believing in annihilationism, I thought, okay, the needle is slightly in favor of annihilationism. So if I had to weigh annihilationism and eternal conscious torment on a scale, I think there's stronger support for annihilationism. So I would, I would have said, annihilationism is the better interpretation of all that the Bible has to say about hell. But now, having studied it in much more detail over the last year, that needle is no longer slightly leaning towards annihilationism. That needle is all the way to the right or your left or whatever. Now, annihilationism is not a better interpretation. Annihilationism is overwhelmingly the best and I would say the only viable interpretation of all that the Bible has to say about hell. I cannot understand, after studying this thing in detail, I cannot understand why I, for 30 years, or anybody on this planet in the history of Christianity would have ever believed in eternal conscious torment. The only reason people believe that is because they learned it from their culture. And they were brainwashed into believing that and when they get saved and started reading the Bible, they simply bring all of those presuppositions into the text. And speaking of brainwashing, I have a video here that you will love if you haven't seen it before. It talks about how we were brainwashed and what the Bible would look like if we never learned about hell before we got saved or before we started reading the Bible. And our only information about hell came from the Bible. I guarantee you that you would be an annihilationist. Alright, thank you for watching. God bless you and I will see you all next time.